So 2020 was definitely a crazy year and let's be honest, it could have been way better. But I hope we come out of it more hopeful this year for 2021. I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you the top five lessons I've learned from 2020 that I hope you can bring to 2021. We're gonna go in reverse order, so let's start with number five with prioritization. And since the pandemic, we've been sheltering in place and most of us have had more time in our lives. Ever since the pandemic started, I've been more reflective about how I want to spend my day and I got to pretty much prioritize what I wanted to do from morning to night. Since the pandemic started, I quit my job and I decided to stop my pursuit for a freelance gig so I can just focus all of my energy on Curative Co. If you haven't heard what Curative Co. is and Intentional Living, go ahead and click the link down below in the description to learn more. Being able to prioritize Curative Co. was the best decision I could make and I was glad that I was able to spend most of my time doing meaningful and fulfilling work. I'm super grateful that I was financially stable enough to be able to take this opportunity. It was great to be vulnerable and honest with my content to share about the struggles and lessons learned in how to live a more intentional life. And let's go to number four, which is reaching out to other people. In 2020, I was really bummed out that I wasn't able to catch up with people over coffee, celebrate birthdays in person, or even see people at work. And I realized that I was taking all of that for granted. Even though interacting with people online wasn't as good as in person, I felt like it really helped. Just sending a text or having a call with someone, asking how they're doing, goes a long way into helping people feel that they're not alone. Over the past nine months, I've been able to text and call a few of my friends. It was great catching up with people through phone calls, video calls, and even text messaging. And I was really grateful to be able to reach out because it really created that connection that we all yearn for throughout the whole pandemic. And that leads us to number three, which is making the most out of a crappy situation. There are a lot of things that we cannot control during the pandemic, especially shelter in place. But the best thing that we can do is make the most out of it. For example, I saw a lot of people getting married and celebrating birthdays on Zoom and that was amazing. I saw people starting hobbies that they really enjoyed and I saw people being able to spend more time with their loved ones at home. Because we were forced to shelter in place for the most part, I was able to be really heads down with my work and I got a lot done. I'm most proud of the work that I've done this year and I really enjoyed seeing myself grow to become a better content creator, whether it was writing, creating videos, or whatever it was. I felt like working on something that I really enjoyed helped me get through most of the days during the pandemic. But that leads us to number two, which is to be gentle and patient with yourself. Because let's be honest, with the coronavirus happening, with some special event on November 3rd that really got us all worked up, or even just some random day, there are a lot of things that could have happened that made us not really feel productive or motivated to do anything. And it's very essential to take a break and focus on longevity. For most of my days, I was productive. I had my work from home routine, which I created a video. I'll also have linked in the description down below. It had everything from having a morning routine, having a journaling routine, working out and all of that. But I'll be honest, like there were days that I didn't really feel it. I realized taking that day off where I didn't work, I didn't cook, or even interact with my housemates helped me really recharge. And typically by the next day, I was good. Moral of the story is that it's okay that you're not productive every single day. All that you can do is just be happy with the opportunities that you end up taking. Your self-worth is not measured by how productive you are. And saving the best for last for number one is to focus on your mental health and well-being. Right when the pandemic started, I quit my job. I was always paranoid about COVID. There was so many craziness in politics and so much shit that happened that a lot of days I just wasn't feeling well. And I couldn't have been able to keep my mental health in check if I weren't doing all of the self-care practices that I had set for myself. The biggest thing that really helped me was therapy because I was able to talk to someone about all the things that were bothering me. I was able to go deep into my feelings and emotions and I was able to set goals that I can work on for the whole year. Now I know therapy is a luxury and not everyone has access to it, but really seeing the benefits that I get from therapy has made me be more of an advocate for mental health access for all. In terms of other practices before the pandemic, I never journaled, I didn't think meditation really worked, I was always checking my social media, and I never appreciated getting exposure under the sun. But complementing all of these things with therapy, I realized that it helped me a ton. I now journal every weekday, I meditate around four times a week, I take a break from social media and the news when I'm really stressed out, and when weather permits, I take a walk outside under the sun to clear my mind. Now because all of these work for me, it does mean that they will all work for you. My only suggestion is that you try it out. 
see what works for you and shift it when needed. The pandemic might have damaged us in many different ways, such as physically, mentally, and even financially. In my opinion, the best way to start recovering is through mental health. So those are the five top lessons that I've learned from 2020 that I hope that you can use for 2021. Thank you to all of those who read my newsletter or watch my videos and have basically joined me in my journey with Curative Co and Intentional Living. I really enjoyed making these videos. So if you really enjoyed them too, hit that like button and comment down below what else you want to hear about in these videos. And what lesson do you think you're gonna apply for 2021? So before you go, I wanna share one quick but very exciting announcement. I don't wanna leave you with just these lessons to figure out on your own. My mission is to really help you live a more intentional life. So if you really want to make 2021 better than 2020, I would love for you to join me in my free four week online workshop series where we will go over these lessons more in depth and you'll be able to learn all the strategies on how to apply it to your 2021. This workshop will be interactive and collaborative. The four week workshop series will consist of one workshop per week where we'll focus on one or two of the lessons so that you can come out of these sessions with a better understanding of what works for you. If you're watching this on YouTube, register for the free workshop by clicking the link down below or if you're on Instagram, click the link in bio. If you can do me a favor and share this workshop to anyone who is interested and make sure they register for the workshop series. Thank you and I'll see you in the workshop. free four week online workshop series. Dang, free four week online, free four week online workshop series.